Good morning, everyone, and I hope you all had a nice break. I'm excited to talk on a topic that I'm near and dear to my heart. So let's get started. I have no disclosures. And so today we're going to talk about discussion of hypertension and treatment strategies and looking at secondary causes and the workup, define and discuss treatment strategies of hypertensive emergencies, and then talk about orthostatic and cardiogenic shock and treatment choices also. So here's kind of the outline we'll talk about this morning. And so let's get started with talking about the diagnosis of hypertension. So the first one's gonna be a case. So does this patient have hypertension? So this is a 43-year-old man referred for the evaluation of hypertension noted during a routine exam. No recent blood pressure measurements, non-smoker, drinks two to three beers per week, and the remainder of the history is negative. Examination, mildly overweight, several blood pressure measurements taken in the office, 146 to 154 over 88 to 96. The remainder of the exam and laboratory test, including the EKG and chest x-ray were all negative. So the patient was provided literature regarding low sodium, weight reducing diet, and was asked to obtain some home blood pressure measurements. Returned in one month, and the blood pressures at home ranged from 124 to 128 over 76 to 80. In the office, continued to be elevated 140 to 144 over 88 to 92. So take your phones. Um, which one of the following could be a correct answer? A, white coat hypertension. B, inappropriate cuff size in the office. C, diagnosis of hypertension. Or D, all the above. Just waiting for some responses here. All right, so yes, D is the correct answer. So let's talk more about this patient. So could it be office white coat hypertension? Absolutely, but what else could it be? So one of the things that is very simple, but very important is actually the size of the cuff. So failure to use a larger cuff on people that have a large arm, muscular patients, really is um, the result it doesn't dampen an incomplete transmission when you're um, using the cuff on the artery. So under cuffing, and this is one of the key points of this slide, is under cuffing can actually give you a false sense of a blood pressure and elevation. So anywhere from five to 10 for systolic and a diastolic of four to seven. Over cuffing doesn't really have a difference. So if you're in doubt when using a cuff size, it's always best to err on the larger cuff size. 75% of the patients, adult patients that is, will need a large cuff. So it's recommended for, by the American Heart Association to really use a large cuff when in doubt and make sure the home blood pressure units that you use or recommend to the patient is a large cuff because most of them come with standard cuffs. So sometimes they have to buy those separately. So talked about the proper cuff size um, for the blood pressure. It's a very simple gesture, just really simple requirement, but it's a very important because this is a diagnosis. So the other important part of this is to make sure the patient is sitting, you know, supported, back supported, feet on the floor, arm supported at heart level, and try to avoid talking. Now, this isn't always practical when you're in hospital setting or even an outpatient setting, but the best you can and then take measurements initially in both arms for comparison. 